does it make a difference in your life? So significance is more important, I would say, than signification. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, now this turned out to a three-part question. Uh, first of all, it seems like uh, the right column is subjective. It has what is the meaning? I mean, that's relative, right? But on the on the left side, it's, uh, it's you know I don't even know if it's theoretically, but you could say uh, what do you mean a cup? I mean you know, this cup here, and that, that's concrete, and, and the other side's not. And well, I mean, yes, to the extent that different people make different judgments of importance. Right. On the other hand, it will depend on the subject matter, right? Not letting, not letting your baby drop, you know, you're carrying your baby, not letting him drop on the floor from this height is important to any mother in the world. I cannot, see, I can't even imagine mothers that start bouncing their babies down like they're like basketballs or throwing their babies, you know, catch this, go, go, go along, here goes the baby. In other words, there are certain things, there are certain judgments of importance that we share across cultures, such as the importance of taking care of the sick, the importance of feeding your kids, the, the importance of many doing things, and yes, many other things are very subjective. Some people pay attention to fashion, some other people don't pay attention to fashion. For the fashionistas, the right belt with the right boots, with the right outfit is extremely important. For the people who don't pay any attention to fashion, it is a trivial, unimportant, insignificant thing. So, so you're right and wrong at the same time. You're right in the sense that there are many subject matters, particularly relatively, those that are not directly related to survival and to bodily harm and to uh, direct well-being, the, the kind of, uh, the type of activities that occur in urban centers, once those urban centers have become sufficiently differentiated that, for instance, fashion can start, that develop, that, or division of labor. Division of labor can also break down significance. What is important for a carpenter is not so important for a metallurgist because the metallurgist doesn't care about wood. So wood is not important to him, whereas metals are. So division of labor can also focus attention in different kinds of things that are important. But that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it uh, subjective, except in a few cases. You know, in the case of fashion, I would totally agree with you. The importance of wearing the right belt with the right shoes, which is extremely important for some rich people, you know, the, the Versace rich, right? Extremely important because when you go out on a, new, on a party, high society, if they notice that it's the wrong, the wrong uh, boots with the wrong belt, the gossip starts and maybe you lose prestige, so it's very important for you that the two things match. 90% of the people would say, Hey, that is an entirely trivial thing. But, but isn't the fact that there's like a degree of subjectivity make it makes it entirely subjective? You know, with a, you know, there's, it can be it can have objective tendencies. But you know, I guess that's it's one comment. And why does it matter if it's subjective? Well, no. I mean, in fact, you just said if subjectivity comes in degrees, then we should make the judgment in terms of those degrees. Let's take advantage that it comes in degrees to say. Some things are more subjective than others, even if we cannot measure it exactly, we can tell at least the extremes. Something, for instance, taking care of your baby is important to 90% of mothers. I would say, just because there's partly natural instinct, partly because of social pressure, if they see you dumping your baby on the floor, they immediately start talking about you as a bad mother and so on. So most mothers would consider it very important not to drop their babies. Although there's got to be 10% that are like, you know, totally, they have their sense of, of, of child rearing totally cross-wired and, and they really don't care about dumping their babies on the floor. So that would be uh, something that's very little subjective, although it has some room for subjectivity. Other things like fashion are almost entirely subjective. But you just said subjective twice, so where is subjective? Oh, well, because they're for the reason that you don't drop your baby. When I ask you why it's important not to drop your baby, because dropping your baby breaks his head. 
because dropping your baby can, you know, can cause it to come into contact with stuff in the floor. In other words, you would immediately give an answer having to do with causes and effects that have to do with the body of the baby, with the objectivity of the body of the baby, right? Feeding your children is important because malnutrition, when you are six or seven years old, causes mental defects and causes underdevelopment of certain mental faculties. Once you've seen a neighbor who doesn't take care of their kids, all of whose kids are like complete weirdos, you know, you start thinking, well, we should take care of our, we should feed and take care of our children. There's a, there's a degree of subjectivity there, in the sense that you might not care about it, but most people feed their kids, right? Meaning, they understand that there is something objective about food intake and bodily development, that you cannot talk away. If we could stop feeding our kids and just telling them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you one day and that should make you feel full. In other words, we could compensate with words for the lack of food, then yes, everything would be subjective. But I, I don't know any kid that's like super hungry and that's going to believe that from their parents, right? I mean, your parent is telling you, oh yeah, well, don't worry about food, food is overrated. <laughs> totally overrated. No. No, water is better. Drink some more. Here. We're thirsty, but hungry. I think water can also be very important. So, even though, and there's subjectivity on this side too, by the way. There's subjectivity on this side too. Because Webster Dictionary gives you the definitions that are standard, doesn't mean that that is the only definition that obtains. Webster Dictionary, just like Dr. Johnson's Dictionary in, in, in England, are ways of standardizing vocabulary. But certain words vary in their meaning according to different communities. So there's, there's an aspect of signification that is partly subjective. You know, certain connotations that, you know, if you just came from prison, the word bitch might be just like a normal word. You know, everybody talks about everybody else as his bitch in prison. You come out and you start using the word and you realize, whoa, people have different meanings here for the word bitch. You know, you have to use it only in certain occasions, you know, and not certain others. I mean, and I'm using just an example out of, you know, thin air here. There's subjectivity on both sides. But, and there's objectivity on both sides having to do with common usage, which is an objective fact, whether a word is used with the same signification throughout a population, which you can check, and there's objectivity here too, because significance, and sometimes, assessments of significance have to do with, is, does this make a difference to my well-being as a physical person? Does feeling my body makes a difference to me as a physical person? Does, does staying away from danger, you know, not driving cars at 200 miles an hour, not throwing myself out of airplanes, does that make a difference to my well-being? Oh, yeah, hell, it does make a difference to your well-being. And in an objective way, throwing yourself out of an airplane without a parachute is not a very healthy thing to do. It makes a difference to your bones. So that's perfectly objective, right? The fact that some daredevils may, despite that, throw themselves out of the thing. I mean, I, there's people who do that, right? There's people who like that extreme intensity of knowing that the danger they are in, nobody would bear except for them. That kind of sense of, you know, the, the rush of driving at 250 miles an hour. Most people don't do it. Some people do. So there's, there's some aspect of subjectivity, but as you said, subjectivity comes in degrees. And so whenever we come across an actual case or an actual judgment of significance, you know, in an actual case when studying history, for instance, well, Napoleon was about to invade Russia and his colonels came to him and told him, do you think it's wise to invade Russia so close to the winter? What if the Russians pull back, forces to pull back, and then we cannot escape before the winter hits? And Napoleon says, hey, that's insignificant.